But when Stedman looked at the human jaw muscle, the difference was immediately obvious. The human biting muscle fibers at the bottom are one third the size of the great apes. This isn't just an isolated case. Every human jaw muscle looks the same. Stedman has discovered that in the distant past, a genetic mutation occurred. It made our ancestors' jaw muscles much weaker than those of the other apes. You wouldn't think that a weaker jaw could be an advantage back in the prehistoric era. But incredibly, it's this genetic mutation that could be responsible for something even more amazing. The secret lies in the way muscles attach to bones, in this case, the skull. If you take a look at this orangutan skull, this is an adult male, this illustrates very nicely that muscles leave an indelible mark on the bones where they attach to them. All the great apes have a crest along the top of their skull. They need it because their strong jaw muscles need a firm anchor. But the thick skull has another effect. It acts like a rigid and inflexible cage on the brain. In humans, our weak jaw muscle exerts far less pressure on the skull. These skulls belong to two different hominid species living together over two million years ago. Australopithecus boisei on the left and Homo erectus on the right. Anthropologists are convinced the genetic mutation occurred in one of these hominids, weakening the jaw muscle and allowing the skull and brain to expand. But which one? The Australopithecus has a large, ape-like jaw muscle, while the Homo erectus has a much smaller, human-like jaw muscle. It's this one that has the genetic mutation. The other dramatic difference, obviously, is in the size of the brain case. Homo erectus has a brain that's 50% larger than Australopithecus boisei. But when did this happen? By comparing how genes vary in different species over millions of years, Hansel Stedman has calculated that the strong jaw muscle mutated into the weaker muscle in our ancestor Homo erectus about 2.4 million years ago. It's one of the most important moments in our evolutionary history. And it's all down to a single genetic mutation. That occurred in one individual at one point in time when there was a gene pool of interbreeding animals that all had the normal version of this gene. And yet, with the passage of time, the only surviving version of that gene in humans is the mutant version. It eclipsed all of the others that were in that breeding pool at that time through the process of genetic fixation. A single genetic mutation, but powerful enough for our ancestors to outcompete all other hominids. But how did these early ancestors of ours survive with jaw muscles 10 to 50 times weaker than their rivals? If you know you're going to lose a jaw-to-jaw -jaw combat, then avoid jaw-to-jaw -jaw combat altogether. Find some other way to annihilate your uh, competitors. And that's what our ancestors did. They switched from brawn to brain. Blessed with a larger brain, our ancestors began to cooperate. They shared their plans, developed complex social structures, this was the first step on a journey that would ultimately propel us into a different world. But before modern humans like us would emerge to conquer the planet, we needed one more ingredient to really take off. One more critical event had to happen. The final piece in the jigsaw. Over two million years ago, our ancestors changed. A single genetic mutation in our jaw muscle allowed our skulls to expand and our brains to grow far larger than our ape cousins. But one further change was the final key to the development of modern human beings. 
It was discovered here at Oxford University in England. In 1996, researchers were studying three generations of one family. Sixteen of them had a severe speech disorder. Um, we got like brain tests, um, mercury tests, um, but to the hospitals to have um, like brain scan. They couldn't produce the delicate movements of tongue and lips that would let them speak clearly. Studying their DNA, the researchers found they all had the same genetic defect. In modern humans, a gene called FOXP2 is essential for speech. It's believed that sometime in the past, a mutation in FOXP2 helped create the neural connections needed for the movements of our lips and tongues. But none of the 16 family members in the study had this mutation. Now they knew what to look for, the researchers tried to work out when the FOXP2 gene changed in our ancestors. They found it mutated as recently as two to three hundred thousand years ago. So our early ancestors who split away from the chimps and bonobos five million years ago probably couldn't talk. It would be millions of years before our ancestors gained the ability to speak. It could be the appearance of the FOXP2 mutation coincided with the emergence of a new species in an area of sub-Saharan Africa. Homo sapiens, or more simply, you and I. Armed with this new linguistic weapon, Homo sapiens poured out of Africa into Europe and Asia. This ability to communicate would drive us forward. We shared knowledge with each other. We explained and taught, copied and learned. Each generation built on the knowledge of the last. If you just look at human history, we started with very simple technologies and simple social institutions, for example, and now we have very complicated ones. And so we've called this the ratchet effect. Each generation of children learns whatever they're exposed to. And then maybe some innovation is made, then the next generation of children learns the innovated, the new version. And then maybe there's a new innovation and the next generation learns a new version. Human cultures can ratchet up in complexity over time and children get them for free. Our language became complex, our technology advanced, our culture richer. We were propelled in leaps and bounds into a different league from the other animals. The primitive forest ape became a modern human. In many ways we are still similar to the apes. Tiny differences in our DNA give us the things that make us special. Brain power, language, complex tools, and our ability to share goals and work together. But the great apes are special too. They have incredible physical strength, fast reactions, and a phenomenal short-term memory. Both of us are adapted for our own environment. But one difference stands out from all the rest. Our development has made us incredibly successful. There are now over 6.6 .6 billion of us on the planet. Compared to the great apes, an astonishing contrast emerges. The number of people born in just two days, some 700,000, is greater than the number of all the great apes in the world. We share most of our DNA with them. But the tiny amount we don't share makes a world of difference.